PGE Park in Portland is a house of horrors for visiting football teams. The Vikings have won nine home games in a row. Portland State has 21 Division 1A transfers ready to flex their muscles against the juggernaut that is Montana football. But the Grizzly Nation rolls into Portland with one of their most high-powered offenses in recent memory, and the defense is as nasty as ever. This is going to be an intense three hours of football. Buckle up for the Grizzlies in Portland State next on College Football Saturday. Welcome to Portland, Oregon. College Football Saturday primetime. Fourth ranked Montana taking on 14th ranked Portland State live from PGE Park in Portland. I'm Jeremy Jorgensen joined by Bob Hermes and this is an outstanding matchup. The game of the week in the Big Sky Conference. Maybe the game of the week in all of the nation in 1AA football. Offensively this game has been a shootout in the past. We'll see if that happens tonight because Portland State banged up at quarterback. Rob Freeman will start. Sawyer Smith is out but the Grizzlies they're set at quarterback. Josh Swagger looked very good last week Bob. Josh really did. He surprised I think all the fans in the stadium last week in Missoula. They came out of there shaking their heads wondering and how good the Grizzlies will be because he looked terrific. Now the strength of Portland State is on the interior. Their offensive line is veteran. Their defensive line very strong. They have some Division 1A transfers up front on the defensive side of the ball, mainly C.J. Nuisalu. He started 11 games for UCLA, one of the many 1A transfers for this Portland State team. Yeah, 300 plus pounds like a lot of the linemen on both sides of the ball for Portland State. They look to be very strong. And I know Coach Bobby Houck talked all week long about hand-to-hand -hand combat and a real war up front tonight. This is a huge game in the Big Sky Conference. Fourth ranked Montana visiting 14th ranked Portland State. We're going to have all the action for you. Settle in. It's going to be a great night of football on College Football Saturday. We'll be back with the kickoff shortly. College Football Saturday is brought to you by Northwestern Energy, delivering a bright future. Your Montana Ford stores, Ford, Bold Moves. The Montana Wood Products Association, promoting healthy forests and healthy communities through management of Montana's forests. By the Dairy Farmers of Montana. Remember, three a day of dairy every day. And the University of Montana. This is an exciting night in Portland, Oregon, PG Park. Jeremy Jorgensen and Bob Hermes with you. Boy, this is a big game, Bob. You can just feel it in the air. Both sides are just really excited for this one, and it's just a huge matchup for both these teams. Yes, it is, Jeremy. And, you know, we've done a lot of games from here over the years, and they always seem to be like this. Although this one this year is, is probably the biggest because of how they're ranked in the top 20 nationally. And, of course, the Big Sky Conference Championship on the line. This is, you're right, it's going to be a dandy, and our fans and viewers are in for a real treat, I think. Well, when the Grizzlies have their A game, they're the best team in the conference. We'll see if they have that A game tonight. And they are going to start on defense. Portland State will receive and set to receive for the Vikings, Kenneth Mackins and Dominic Dixon, two of their best players. Dixon, a very good defensive back as we take a look at Coach Bobby Houck. He's 31-12 and 12 in his fourth season at the University of Montana. Dan Carpenter will kick it deep for the Grizzlies, and this Grizzly defense gets a chance to set the tone early, Bob. Well, you notice Bobby Houck, as you mentioned, a uh, little smile there, but he's nervous, and both coaches are. I talked to Tim Walsh, too, and just before kickoff, and they are both a little nervous. But you're right, the defense is going to set the tone for Montana here, and boy, have they been good so far this year as well. Here we go from Portland, Oregon, a big showdown in the Big Sky Conference. Dominic Dixon has it at the goal line. He brings it out. The Montana special teams has been great in kick coverage, and they're pretty good again. They bring it out to the 25-yard line. Let's take a look at the offensive starters for Portland State, brought to you by Allegiance Benefit Plan Management, your benefits at work and uh, we'll take a look at the offensive starters for Portland State coming up but we'll talk about Rob Freeman the quarterback this is his second game you know he's been pretty efficient he hasn't put up big numbers Bob he's 25 of 37 but the key with him no interceptions I think they're asking him just not to make any mistakes yeah their game plan is to run the ball run it again and then screen pass and short pass plays they're not going to go deep much although I expect him to test it a couple of times 
First and 10 from the 22 for Portland State. They give it to Kalena Hookana, the tailback out of Hawaii. He takes it out to the 25. And let's take a look at the defensive starters for the University of Montana, brought to you by Allegiance Justin Benefit Deloitte, Plan Manager. Idaho Falls, Idaho. Kerry Mullins, Stephen. Bill High School. Craig Mettler, Walla Walla, Washington. Troy Beerman, Hardin High School. Kyle Ryan, Billings West High School. Lauren Utterback, Fort Bend High School. Tyler Joyce, Aurora, Colorado. Tough Harris. Colts for Montana. James Leon Wilson III, San Diego, California. Troy Thomas, B Red County High School. Colt Anderson, Pew High School, Pew America. It's second and eight from the 25. Freeman back to throw. Five wideouts are in the game. It's nearly picked off, and it is picked off. Montana has intercepted the football, and they will take over. That's Dustin DeLuey, the kid out of Idaho Falls, Idaho, making a big play right away. And there is a flag on the play. We'll see if this comes back. Montana, I mentioned at the top, ready for that screen package, and they were able to see it happen and react to it before it was successful. We'll see what the call is here. Dustin really making a big play. They're going to say inadvertent there. They're going to take the flag away. So here comes the Montana offense led by Josh Swagger. Boy, they're in great position too here. Matt. First and 10 from the 25. What a big play defensively. And we said they were going to set the tone, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, it's a massive break for Montana here on the first play from scrimmage to get the ball back. First and 10, ball on the 24 for Josh Schwager in the Grizzly offense. Here's a handoff on a reverse, and pretty good yardage. Here's a, take, here's a look at the offensive starters brought to you by Allegiance Benefit Plan Management. Colorado. Daniel Bowden, Knox and Heisel. Cody Baylog, Stoke and Washington. Taryn Hilsland, Sydney High. Jeff Marshall, Newport Beach, California. Colin Dow, Billing Senior High. Brett Russell, Lewiston, Idaho. Hand off to Reggie Bradshaw. Bradshaw looks for the corner, and he's close to first down yardage for the Grizzlies. Let's take a look at the defensive starters for Portland Strait, brought to you by Allegiance Benefit Plan Management. Your benefits at work. They have some very good defensive players, defensive backs. Our Dominic Dixon, he's out of O'Day High School in Seattle, Washington. 13 tackles, two interceptions. He is certainly one to watch, but that front line also very good. It is third and one from the 15 for the Grizzlies. After the interception by Dustin DeLuy, Montana in business. Reggie Bradshaw's in the backfield. It's a quick pitch to Bradshaw, and Bradshaw is going to be short of the first down. That'll bring up fourth and one. And what do you do here? Kick the field goal or go for it, Bob? I have a feeling knowing Coach Houck, he's going to kick the field goal. We'll see. He is thinking about it, though. They're not running out quickly. Portland State really rallied to stop that first down there. It looks like Bobby's going to take a chance here and go for it. Well, I know after a big turnover, he likes to take advantage of that field position and go for this, and he wants to make a statement right away here that he believes in his team. So it's fourth and one from the 16, Josh Swagger. He's going for an out, and it's intercepted by Odell Jackson. Jackson intercepts the slant pass, and he is still running. Now he's going to be brought down by Daniel Bowden, the freshman tied in. So we've had two interceptions in this ball game, and it's kind of equaled out. Yeah, and a little bit surprised Montana went for it and didn't take the field goal, but Portland State's right back in it. They are fired up. Let's take a look at the offensive starters for Portland State, brought to you by Allegiance Benefit Plan Management. Your benefits at work. And uh, Rob Freeman is the starter, as we mentioned. Kalena Hookana, the running back out of Hawaii, number 24. We'll watch for him tonight. They're in a power eye situation as you take a look at the guys up front. Derek Duff is one to watch. The center is a very good football player for Portland State. There's a direct handoff to Hookano. He gets it to the outside, and there's a fumble, it looks like, but they're calling it down. Just short yardage at best for Hookano. And that's the steady diet game plan for the Vikings. They're going to run the ball. They're extremely large up front. I mean, it's like 305, 315, 325. Uh, they get out and block. And, and we'll see how they can hold up all night long running the ball like that. But that is definitely their game plan. And as we mentioned, then screens. Three wideouts in the ball game for Portland State. Kalena Hookana. 
is the tailback. And there's a reverse for Portland State. It's wrapped up pretty nicely by the Grizzlies. However, it's close to first down yardage. That's Brandon Jones, the wide receiver, on the reverse for Portland State. We'll see where they mark it here. They get about seven on the play. It's going to be short, so it'll be third and one. Yeah, they strung it out that time. I think Montana's doing a little bit of the same package, running up front and then stretching everybody from sideline to sideline. Third and one, the ball is marked on the 23. We're just underway in Portland at PGE Park. Portland State and the Grizzlies, a big top 15 showdown. There's Kalena Hookana, and he has the corner, and he has a first down for Portland State. He looks like a good running back, very fast to the outside. We're going to see if Montana's going to be able to contain him on the corner throughout the night. Muammar Ali is the 1A transfer from New Mexico State. He is in street clothes today. He still has yet to play with a shoulder injury. He is the future at tailback for Portland State, but he has not played yet this season, and he is in sweats on the sidelines for tonight's ball game. And they're going back to Huokana. Good play inside there by the Grizzly defense as the linebackers fill their holes nicely. That was a great play by Lauren Utterback. Yeah, and Montana, you know, one of the strengths of the defense is their quickness and the way they get to the ball so fast. The other strength of Montana this year is their strength itself. They really went into a physical conditioning program, lifting, and I asked uh, Craig Paulson if he thought those guys could hold up up front against these huge linemen, and he said he thought they could tonight. Second down and seven. The ball is marked on the 31. Mike Murphy is in the ball game, folks. He didn't play last week, but he's back in there. Dustin DeLuey, the star from last week, he's out there. And there is a fumbled football. And the Grizzlies do not get it back. It looks like Portland State gets back on it. Boy, they're lucky on that one. Great job by the Montana defense to stretch that out, get to the sideline, and force the fumble. Yeah, and you see a lot of people hustling. And again, usually this year for Montana, there's several people on the tackle, not just one or two. And you'll notice there, there's about five white shirts in the vicinity. So a big loss. It's third and 14. They'll mark it at the 25 for Portland State. Third and 14 after the big loss. Mike Murphy in at defensive end. He had an appendectomy a week and a half ago about two weeks ago now on the bye week, and uh, he is in there, did not play last week. It's good to see number 90 out there. Freeman back to throw. Murphy is all over him, but they get the screen pass, and it is going to be well short of the first down. A great play by the Montana defense right there. Kyle Ryan out there mixing it up. Well, you mentioned Mike Murphy. He rocked the quarterback's world. Watch this hit on the quarterback. After the, oh, after the ball's away, the quarterback is buried. He's slow to get up and short of a first down. Wow, a host of players in there. Quentin Jackson also in there. Great job by the Montana defense. And here is Tough Harris set to return for the Grizzlies. He's a fantastic return man. He is set up at the 30. It's a short kick. They kick it away from him out of bounds. And Montana is going to have great field position. You're watching College Football Saturday. That was a 35-yard punt. We're live from Portland. This is the Grizzlies in Portland State on Montana's news station. Welcome back to College Football Saturday primetime from Portland, Oregon. The Montana Grizzlies and Portland State Vikings, a top 15 showdown. We're just underway. Teams have swap turnovers two interceptions already in the ball game the Grizzlies have it first and 10 on the 36 there's a handoff to Reggie Bradshaw and a real good play by DJ Robinson the veteran linebacker for Portland State there's a flag down on the play it's going to be holding against Montana so this will drive him back 10 yards coach Houck did talk about the fact that Swaggart still has that cast on his left hand and the last play is one of his hardest to execute in a handoff going to the left side, a zone play to the left side. It's hard because of the cast to get the ball there, but he looked pretty efficient at it on the last play. There you see a good shot of Coach Houck. There's the call right there, so it is holding. and. You know, this turf here at PGE Park is not the best. They play baseball here. You can see where the cutouts are for the bases. The Portland Beavers play here at PGE Park, and they're a AAA affiliate of the San Diego Padres. 
and the field is not the best, especially at this end. At the other end, where the outfield would be for the baseball field, it's a lot better where the outfield would be. But right here, where the team is at right now, it's not the best. Yeah, it's very hard, as you mentioned, and uh, it's pretty fast. I asked the coaches for Montana, and some of the veteran coaches, they said it's better than it used to be because they've set it up a little better here lately, but it's still awfully hard, and it is a fast track. Jeff Marshall is in at center tonight for the Grizzlies. They have been rotating Ryan Wells and Jeff Marshall, waiting the arrival of J.D. Quinn, the transfer from the University of Oklahoma, still not eligible. When he becomes eligible, he'll be in there at center and make this offensive line that much better. Swagger steps up in the pocket. He's looking to the sidelines to Ryan Bagley, and Bagley has it at about the 42-yard line. The Portland State Vikings say they want a fumble, and the officials are calling it down. So a nice gainer for Montana after the holding penalty. They're back past the original line of scrimmage. And a nice throw by Josh that time. Got out of the pocket a little bit. I think it is in Montana's game plan to flush him a little bit like this. Last week, he was almost exclusive drop back. But I, I remember listening to Bobby talk about getting out of the pocket tonight a little bit. A gain of 15. It's second and five. The ball is at the 41. Swagger back to throw. He's looking for the short route to Eric Allen, and Allen has it. Eric Allen fighting for yards, and that's going to be a first down for Montana. Wasn't that a pretty play? Just a little stop pattern over the middle. And what was interesting, he's actually covered well, but Josh was able to thread the needle and put the ball really the only place he could go without getting intercepted or knocked down. Excellent catch. Just like we saw last week, there you see that arm strength from Swagger. That was a gain of 12. The ball is cross midfield at the 47. First and 10 for the Grizzlies, looking to put some points on the board and get this thing started off in their favor. Swagger's out of the shotgun. He's looking for the fade route on the sidelines, and it was there for just a fraction of a second, but it's overthrown, incomplete. He'd love to have that one back because Eric was open just for a second. You notice they're not huddling here. They're getting their calls from the sideline, trying to pick up the pace a little bit. They'll do this from time to time. No Craig Chambers yet. It's Eric Allen and Ryan Bagley working with the first team offense and Josh Swagger. It's second and 10 at the 47. Portland State punted it away and Montana on the march after a holding penalty backed him up for the time being. Reggie Bradshaw is met by DJ Robinson once again. Robinson is second on the team in tackles with 23. He's the veteran linebacker for Portland State, a real good football player. Yeah, the Vikings brought a big package blitz there. The free safety came up, number 17. You can see him at the bottom of the screen and came inside, throwing some uh, hands to the face there at the end. The officials may get on this, we'll see. Third and nine, the ball is at the 47 for Swagger and the Grizzly offense. Reggie Bradshaw in the backfield. Swagger, a straight drop back, and he is going to be sacked. It's DJ Robinson again. The Grizzlies having a ton of trouble with the veteran linebacker. Well, another big blitz package. They brought two or three extra people. Just figuring they'll put more people at the point of attack, and we're able to get to him. It looks like three are coming, and then a host of uh, extra rushers step up and come the corner, the safety, and the middle and the middle backer. So they punt it away to Brendan Farino. Great coverage by Tyler Joyce. They bury him inside the 10-yard line, number six, in there on the special teams, doing well. It was a 50-yard punt, by the way, for Dan Carpenter, who leads the league. And there's some laundry on the field. There's a flag on the play. Yeah, two. Two flags by that time. It's going to be a hold against Portland State, so it'll drive him back. You know, Tyson Johnson's out with injury. He's the main punter, but Dan Carpenter, the place kicker, now the punter, and his punting has been fantastic so far since he has stepped in for Tyson Johnson. He really has done a good job kicking the ball this year for the Grizz. So back them up even further. You're watching College Football Saturday here on Montana's news station. On the 
St. Clair Oil Halftime Show. We'll send it back to Montana for a news update from Montana's news station. Plus, we will take a look at the bookstore first half highlights and stats. That's all coming up on the St. Clair Oil Halftime Show. And Portland State is backed up all the way to the three-yard line after the penalty and the great kick coverage by Montana. And they get nothing on first down. So it'll bring up second and long for Portland State. That's called their 22 personnel group, two tight ends, two backs, and they'll run that most of the night. Olani Ishibomahin is in at fullback. He is another one of the transfers. You know, there's 43 1A and junior college transfers on this Portland State football team. And traveling on this trip for the Grizzlies, four. That really puts things in perspective right there. 4.53 to go here in the first quarter. It is second and six for Portland State. There's a handoff right up the middle to the fullback, and it's going to bring up a third down play for Portland State. Let's go down to Dave Guffey, who is standing by on the sidelines. One thing you always talk about when you're at pg e Park, if you're Montana, the artificial surface here, very different than Washington Grizzly Stadium, called Next Turf. It's only about five years old, but Tuff Harris, Rob Schulte, very anxious to get a chance to return a kick or a punt on this very, very quick surface here in pg e Park. Back upstairs to Bob and Jeremy. Thanks a lot, Dave. Bobby McClintock in the game at tailback. They're going away from him, and it is intercepted by Tuff Harris, and he is going to score a Montana touchdown. Well, you mentioned Bobby McClintock. He's the lead blocker there. And he, one of the Grizzly DNs, I think, got a hand on it. We'll see if we can see who tapped it. Ball went up. Mike Murphy, there you go. Welcome back, number 90. Yeah, he's such a great player. He's been all his career. That was a 13-yard interception return for a touchdown by Tuff Harris, the senior out of Cole Strip, Montana. Dan Carpenter is in for the extra point, and just like that, the Grizzlies have taken a 7-0 lead in this big ball game in Portland on College Football Saturday. Stay with us, folks. Coming up near the end of the game, we'll present the Northwestern Energy players of the game. Northwestern Energy delivering a bright future. The future looking very bright for Montana right now. 4.04 to go in the first quarter. It is 7 to nothing, Montana. There's a look at the scoring drive. One play, 13 yards. That's a beautiful scoring drive if you're a Montana Grizzly fan. For all the latest information and statistics, log on to MontanaGrizzlies.com. And Dominic Dixon set to return the kick from Dan Carpenter, and nobody's going to return that kick it looks like Kenneth Mackins decides to stay in the end zone and that was a real good idea 358 to go in the first quarter seven nothing Montana Rob Freeman will take that Portland State offense back out on the field and they got to be rattled a little bit after that interception Bob I think so again Mike Murphy is just such a good DN especially his pass rush and they wanted him in for that although Portland State doesn't throw a lot he was able to tip the ball up and that's what caused the touchdown so watch number 90 and they rotate him a lot on different passing situations first and 10 for Portland State Freeman back to throw he's getting some pressure from Croy Beerman and Dustin DeLui wraps up Freeman what a play by Dustin DeLui he had 14 total tackles on the season. 12 of those were last week. Dustin DeLouis, the senior, is coming to life this season. And it's interesting, on first down, they choose to throw the ball. This is not their game. This is not their game plan. So for Montana, it, I think it's playing into Montana's hands if Portland State's going to try to throw the ball. Second and nine, the ball is at the 21 after the great play by Dustin DeLouis. A gain of just one, so it doesn't go down as a sack for Dustin DeLouis. And that is almost intercepted by Mookie Foreman. It's tipped again. The defensive front of the Grizzlies is owning that Portland State offensive line right now. Yeah, and you've got a young quarterback in there against a great defense. You're putting him in a tough spot here to throw the ball this quick. And now the second ball is tipped, and that almost was another touchdown for Montana. Mookie Foreman was out there. Kelly Kane in the ball game at defensive tackle. He got a hand up on that one. Real good play by Kelly Kane out of CM Russell High School in Great Falls. It's third and nine. The ball is at the 21. Kalena Hoekna in the backfield. 
for Portland State. Freeman back to throw. He's going deep and he has Kenneth Mackins, but he doesn't get enough air under it and he overthrows Mackins and that's a punting situation for Montana or for Portland State. Mackins was open too, but the ball just didn't get there in time. So it's fourth and nine at the 21, 258 to go here. Montana has a 7-0 lead. It was an interception return of 13 yards by the veteran defensive back, Tough Harris for the Grizzlies. And Harris is set to return this punt by Portland State. The Grizzlies get a little pressure on it. Harris has it at the 43. Actually, he fumbles the football, and Portland State has the football. A fumble by Tough Harris. Well, that's the best play for the Vikings, and they're excited about it. They should be. Tough Harris, uh, I think he probably wishes he to call the fair catch here. There was a lot of heat on him as he decided to go ahead and take the ball. Adam Hayward, the leading tackler for Portland State with the fumble recovery. Adam Hayward played two years at Colorado State, transferred to Portland State. He is currently their leading tackler, one of the best tacklers in the conference with 38 total tackles. He recovers the fumble right there, and Portland State has it at the 42-yard line. Yeah, it's tough when your defense goes three and out and then has to come back on. Mike Murphy now back in, rotating every other series. Bobby McClintock in the backfield and Freeman doesn't like what he sees and there's a flag down on the play. I think the right guard flinched for Portland State. We'll see what the call is or if they give him a timeout. I think it's going to be false start on the Vikings. You know, we haven't really touched on. Yep, they're going to take a timeout, but both of these coaches staffs are very veteran group and very good coaches. I mean, Bobby Houck is emerging as a tremendous coach and is, but Tim Walsh is no slouch either. His 14th year in the conference and has a great record. It's now time for the BarneyJettyJewelry.com gem of a play. We go back to last week's game against Sacramento State. Senior quarterback Josh Swagger would end the day with 14 completions on 18 attempts for 221 yards and three touchdowns. His third touchdown pass would go to junior wideout Eric Allen. What a beautiful pass from 19 yards out as Montana rolls over Sacramento State 59 to 14. That has been the Barney Jetty Jewelry.com gem of a play. There's been a few gems in this one already. Tough Harris returned an interception, 13 yards for a touchdown. Then Harris just fumbled a punt. So he's had both ends of the spectrum so far in this ball game. Yep, definitely. We'll see what the Vikings can do. They really need to make something happen off the turnover and get some points here, or they might be in for a long night. And I think Coach Walsh knows that. First and 10 from the 42 for Portland State. There is a handoff right up the middle to Shabomahine, the fullback in the ball game for Portland State. Chris Clark coming up from cornerback, making a great tackle here, open field really. Almost a picture perfect form tackle. Watch it here as he closes in underneath and just does a nice job of filling and wrapping up. That's Kyle Ryan. Okay, nice tackle by Kyle. Grabs him by the legs and there's nothing happening. Second and eight from the 40 for Portland State. Ilani Shabomahin has the football and he has fumbled the football and the Grizzlies have it. My goodness, we have a turnover fest going on. Montana football at the 41 yard line. And again, I think it speaks to the, the physical nature of what's going on up front. Both of these teams really active. Watch these guys pushing at the line of scrimmage, trying to make something there, but Montana looks so strong up front. Troy Bierman on the fumble recovery for Montana. You'll see the ball pop up in the middle here in that Grizzly defensive front just doing a great job. Bierman forces the fumble and he recovers the fumble. How about that play from the kid from Harden, Montana? First and 10, Swagger back to throw. He's looking deep across the middle and it is incomplete intended for Mike Ferreter. Yeah, the defender there just trying to play catch up and get into get into coverage, Adam Hayward coming from linebacker and Josh threw it right in his back of his helmet. Five turnovers in the first 13 minutes of this football game. We're still in the first quarter. And quite a few penalties too in Montana. 
hasn't had a lot of penalties, but both sides of the ball have been penalized. I think the Vikings about a little bit more than Montana so far. Four wide receivers in the ball game for Montana, second and 10 from the 41 yard line. Brady Green in the backfield for the Grizzlies. The long snap count by Swagger. Swagger gives it to Brady Green, and Brady Green is loose up the middle. Brady Green might break this one open. He gets into the secondary, down to the 24-yard line. The captain, number 41, a big week last week, and he continues it this week. What a nice looking back Brady has become. Just the work ethic is always there, according to his coaches. They're so proud of him from Brighton, Utah. Watch him here. Not the biggest back in the Big Sky Conference, but he's got a ton of heart. Green is now on the sideline. Reggie Bradshaw back in the ball game. That was a 30-yard gain for Brady Green. There's a flag down. Well, start on Montana. So we'll back him up. 127 to go here in the first quarter. As you see the call from our officials tonight, our official head referee is Bruce Palmer. Uh, Bobby's letting the officials know he didn't like it a lot, but I think he, they were talking to the guard that he reset himself twice after he was set the first time. He can't do that. So instead of first and 10, it's first and 15. You know, if you're a wide out or, or a off the line of scrimmage, you can move again and reset, but those interior linemen can't. Reggie Bradshaw in the ball game at tailback after a big run by Brady Green. Swagger rolls out. A great throw and a great catch to Daniel Bowden, the freshman tight end out of Knoxon, Montana. What a pretty play that was. That's a little bootleg, uh, play action bootleg. They fake inside. I mentioned that I thought the coaches were going to roll Josh out a little bit more tonight, and that's exactly what happened here. And he just takes his time, threads the needle for a first down. First and 10 from the 14. A 15 yard gain to Daniel Bowden. Redshirt freshman tight end out of Knoxon, Class C football. Brady Green is back in the ball game for the Grizzlies. They give it to Green. He cuts it up, gets some nice yardage, and is belted out there. Good play by the Portland State defense. That is number 36, Michael Dorsey. Dorsey, a senior leader for Portland State. Again, you'll notice Montana, I think this is part of the game plan to stretch the line of scrimmage and make those big linemen work and cover the field. The idea, I think, is to wear people down in the fourth quarter, then this running will be a little easier, and those folks got to travel a long way to make a tackle. That's the end of our first quarter here on College Football Saturday primetime from PGE Park in Portland. Montana leads at 7 nothing, but they have it second and eight on the 12. We'll be back with the second quarter in just a few moments.